Artists are constantly fighting tooth and nail to get their work seen on platforms like Instagram, constantly battling algorithm changes and more expectations for when you should post and what you should post and at what frequency. It's a whole mess. But there's a better way to sell your artwork that is more effective and less stressful, and that's email newsletters. So in this video, I wanna talk about why I think email newsletters are so great, why they have so much potential, and how you can get started. And of course, I wanna say thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Increasingly, social media platforms are punishing users, creators, artists like us from pushing people off platform. Platforms like Instagram and TikTok are increasingly kind of like shadow banning or suppressing the reach of posts that use words that push people off platform. Phrases like link in bio are increasingly being scrutinized because they've been linked to a suppression of reach. And I think that is really terrible. Luckily, email marketing doesn't have that problem. Once you have people on your email list, it just takes one time to get them on your list. All they have to do is opt in once. They are there forever until they unsubscribe. And that's their choice to be there. They've decided that. Then you can take them on an entire journey convincing them to purchase your products or at least understand the appeal of what you have to offer, announce shop updates, allow them to get to know you, build that relationship without relying on that social media platform. You can sell as much as you want within reason. Obviously, you don't want them to unsubscribe, but you can just do whatever you want and know that they're going to see that post. They're going to see that email newsletter. They're going to read it. And you don't have to worry about policing your language for an algorithm. There are three reasons why I think every artist should have an email newsletter. And the first is the direct control that you have over this list. Email marketing often feels much more direct and personal than things like Instagram posts or even YouTube videos because it's written by you often, you know, hopefully in your own words, you're not outsourcing it to chat GBT. You're writing it from the heart and you mean it. And hopefully you're including, you know, pictures of your cat or whatever you're working on in the studio. You're making it your own. You're making it personal. And I feel like that really helps build a much closer relationship with your audience than something like Instagram, just because it there's an intimacy to it, I feel like, when done correctly, that's really advantageous. And you can also engage with people literally directly. You can have them reply to your emails and then start a conversation, a back and forth between you and your hopeful new collector. You can also totally customize the way your emails look, depending on the platform that you go with, be it MailChimp, Squarespace, Beehive, ConvertKit, Flowdesk, whatever. You can make it look super, super unique, super you. You can totally brand it. It can look exactly how you want it to look and you can send them as often as you want, be that every week or once a month or once every quarter or just announcing your shop updates. It can really be at whatever frequency works best for you and you don't have to worry about some you know, bizarre algorithm suppressing your reach because you haven't posted in a couple, in like a couple weeks. That's not a concern here. You can really write emails at your own pace and have it be whatever you want. I think that's so powerful. I'm so tired of having to post all the time. It's really exhausting. And email newsletters provide a viable alternative to the rat race of social media. The other big advantage here is that you own this list. It's not owned by some massive social media conglomerate. This email list is yours. You can take it to whatever platform you want and you can switch providers whenever you want to. You can start out with MailChimp and then switch over to Squarespace or Beehive or Flowdesk, whatever. You can change email marketing providers whenever you want to and your email list will stay with you. And I think there is a massive amount of comfort with the knowledge that if your main social media platform were wiped off the face of the earth tomorrow, you would still be able to communicate with your most engaged fans, i.e. your email list. The second reason that I think every artist should have an email newsletter is the ability to showcase your artwork and sell to your most engaged followers. You can use your email newsletters to post whatever you want to, but I think the real power here is your ability to market your art and just share the behind the scenes, right? You can really make people care about you and your journey by just talking about your process, your inspirations, your hopes, your dreams, your journey as an artist, and update them on what's going on in your life. How is that shop update going? What are you learning this week in school? 
all of these things you can share on your email list. And you can also market to these people with the knowledge that you're not bothering them. They opted into this. They asked for you to send them emails. They said, yes, I want to receive these emails. And then you can pitch yourself without feeling like you're bothering them, right? Without feeling like you are, I don't know, providing a burden or something that you're just bugging them with these spammy sales posts. That's not the vibe here. You can sell and market your artwork and they signed up for that. There's an expectation that emails will be used for self-promotion. And as long as you're not really spammy about it, I feel like you can do a lot here. You can market an upcoming collection. You can pre-sell your prints if you're offering them in a limited edition drop. You can advertise your solo exhibition. You can talk about your shop updates. You can really share whatever you want to share. You can monetize your email list. And it is an amazing opportunity to practice marketing yourself, pitching your products, like really feeling comfortable and building that experience as a salesperson because I feel like as artists, we really are salespeople. At the end of the day, we have to kind of pitch our artwork to make a living and that's a skill. You're not going to feel comfortable with it at first, but selling first to your email list really helps build that comfort, I think. Just that that ease in yourself, that confidence that you know what you're doing and you're not being a bother by selling and promoting your work to the world. And the third reason why I think every artist should have an email list are the powerful automation opportunities for passive marketing. I will admit, automations and like email automations, they don't work for every kind of product, right? You probably don't wanna do this kind of thing for things like shop updates, but if you are selling more evergreen products things like courses, ebooks, like tutorials, guides, maybe even prints. You can create automated sales campaigns that activate on a trigger. So let's say that you are selling a course on watercolor painting, right? And maybe you make a YouTube video about it. You can have a particular sign up link to your email newsletter in that video. And then when someone signs up to your newsletter via that link, they can start automatically receiving just a whole like sales email campaign of like maybe seven emails every other day, like just one email every other day for, you know, seven times, pitching this product, selling this to them, communicating its value, talking about how it helps people and they can decide whether or not it's for them, but you are marketing that product and they have signed up to receive emails from you. Then when that campaign is done, hopefully they purchased your course, but if not, that's fine. Then they're added to your overall email list. But your email marketing tool will put a little tag or a little label, sort this person into a bucket that says they're interested in watercolor painting. And then whenever you wanna advertise that course or whenever you have anything watercolor painting related, you can send an email to that segment of your email list. Do you see how that power, do you see how powerful that is? Do you see the advantages there? Imagine, being able to reach a thousand people that you know are interested in the thing that you're selling, that they signed up to receive sales emails from you, they know who you are, they like you, they like your work, and they see an advantage in it. And then you can access them directly, you can communicate to them directly without any other platform in the way. No algorithm sitting between you guys, just direct communication to your most passionate fans. So now that you understand the basics, let's talk about how you can actually get started. But before we do that, I do want to briefly thank the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. I made over $18,000 last year just from digital products. And Squarespace is the reason that happened. Squarespace has been crucial to the growth of my business, and I want you to understand exactly how it can help you. Squarespace makes it easy to sell physical or digital products, display your work, grow your audience, and so much more. Their Fluid Engine allows you to design your website exactly how you would like. And with their new courses feature, you can host and sell online courses on your own website, which is a really cool addition. Every year, Squarespace adds brand new high value features to their service. So if you're looking for the perfect tool to propel your business to new heights, click the link in the description or go to squarespace.com slash Kelsey Rodriguez and use code 
Kelsey Rodriguez at checkout to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. Once you figure out who your email marketing service provider is going to be, you probably want to figure out what to write and how to grow your list, right? So here's what I would recommend. If you do have an active profile on social media, I would recommend that you create something called a lead magnet. A lead magnet is like a reason for someone to sign up for your email newsletter. You are giving them like a gift in return, right? It can be as simple as like a PDF resources page for, I don't know, the colors in your palette or whatever. It could be a free Photoshop or Procreate brush kit. You could offer phone wallpapers, icon packs, like any kind of easy digital product that someone might be interested in, you offer to that you offer that to them for free in return for them signing up for your email list. You could also just have a QR code or take signups at art fairs, cafes, wherever you have your art, wherever you're selling in person. And then you can also, of course, just include a sign up page in you know, any link in bio service. Generally, I think it's good to explicitly mention your email newsletter that is a thing that you're doing that's happening, just to make people aware that it exists aside from just having you know, a link in your bio. Maybe you give people that sign up to your email list 24 hour early access to shop updates. There are a few ceramic artists that I know that do this and I have never signed up to their email list so fast. Um, I've never signed up to an email list faster just because their shop updates sell out so quickly and it is so valuable for me to be able to preview what they're gonna sell and to hopefully snag something early before it can be snatched up. <laughs> because some of these ceramic artists that I really admire, their work sells out so fast. And so for me, there really is a strong advantage in me signing up for their email newsletter just because it, I, I, it's worth it. I know I'm gonna get what I want out of it. It's a really good value. So yeah, as you're marketing your art, just start collecting emails. You can be deliberate about it or you can have it running in the background. I kind of have mine running in the background for now and I have for a while just because it wasn't really a priority in my life for a long time and now it is going to be, hopefully, fingers crossed. But okay, you have figured out what platform you're gonna use and how you're gonna collect your emails. Now, you gotta figure out what to write. That's kind of the hard part, right? I would recommend that you don't throw yourself in the deep end immediately because it's it's a hard habit to get used to if you're not used to writing all the time. And I feel like there is writer's block that people experience constantly when it comes to email newsletters. I started my email newsletter back in like January and then I posted maybe like five times and then I didn't post for like seven months. <laughs> and now I'm restarting it because I just I just didn't know what to write. And I felt really nervous and insecure that I was gonna write something bad and people weren't gonna like it and they were gonna unsubscribe. And so I thought it was just better to not write anything at all, which is of course a mistake. But anyway, here we are trying to recover from that. And <sighs> I don't think that you should overthink it. Just talk about whatever you wanna talk about. Talk about what you were working on in the studio today, what projects you're working on. They don't have to be finished. You can post works in progress. Just talk about your inspirations, what you're learning, what you're focusing on. Maybe provide like some educational tips if you want to, if that's your thing. That's definitely my thing, as you can probably tell, but it doesn't have to be everyone's thing. You also don't have to post, you also don't have to write and send emails on a super regular basis. You can really just post like shop update emails if you want to every so often when it's, you know, when it's applicable. But I do think that it's worth it to build a habit of eventually writing an email newsletter once a week if you have stuff to share, just because people forget that you exist. They do. It sucks, but they do. And writing an email once a week helps keep you kind of on your customers' minds just so they know you exist and yeah, hopefully you have some products they can purchase from you that are not super linked to, you know, monthly or quarterly shop updates. Maybe you have a Patreon, maybe you have a YouTube channel where you can, you know, plug your latest video, whatever. Just talk about what's going on in your life. Just talk about, you know, what's new with you. Don't overthink it really don't overthink it. And if you're agonizing over what to write in your first email, just pick any topic. It does not matter. I waited 
a good couple years before I sent an email to my email list. And I had a couple thousand people on it at that point. And I had like a 60% open rate. So 60% of the people that I sent that email to opened it, which is very good in email marketing. And I didn't introduce myself. I didn't like be like, hi, this is me. Thank you for joining. I was just like, hi, here you are. Here I am. Let's talk about, you know, whatever I wanted to talk about. I think it was like AI art lawsuits at the time. And that was like the thing that I wanted to talk about in that email newsletter. And I just did. So don't overthink it. Just pick any topic. Just write it. If you are really, truly, extremely nervous and you're also not writing to anyone on your list, just send it to yourself. Just get in the habit of writing one. Email newsletters are truly amazing marketing tools for artists. The ability to connect directly to your most engaged fans without an algorithm standing in your way just cannot be overstated. The value to that. You know what I mean? Anyway. I have been trying to film this video for forever and I have to get it done tonight. So that is going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of the insight into my process here with this footage that I've overlaid over the top of this video. I am planning on posting a studio vlog very soon. So stay tuned for that. And there is a plane overhead. Anyway, that's it for me. Bye. (laughs) 